Okay, guys, this is the project for the day. We are going to carve a something. I haven't quite figured out what yet. Got a big nose and a mu big mustache going. I'm trying to get our camera situated here. Okay. Yep, there we go. Big nose, big mustache. And we are using a saber burr, saber tooth burr. It is a uh, taper burr. And uh, this is kind of just like when you're making a wood spirit. You plunge in on the outside of your lines and go over them. And you want to be straight up and down when you do that. Um, the top of the nose will get pushed back up under that hat that we haven't made yet. See, we're going around the hat. Cutting it in a little bit. This project's probably taking me about um, a good four hours to make. I know, it's just a little guy. Why did it take so long? But, uh, that's what it took. And we still aren't done with it. So we're feathering everything back from the nose, guys. Keep it, just feather it all back. Just like you're doing a wood spirit face. But this will not be a wood spirit. Feathering back, feathering back. This was a lot of fun. This was a fun project to do today. Um, we finished our beaver project. The beaver challenge from Rich over there at uh, Choose Your Own Path. So I got to get a hold of him and get his address to mail it out to him. <clears throat> Still fighting this cold, guys. Not, I'm about 70% now. It probably wouldn't have taken me that long if I was feeling good and I could just sit there and carve, but there was a couple times I had to just go take a break and things started getting a little fuzzy. So we're feathering that mustache in. Up underneath the uh, beard mustache there, we're, we're feathering that back. And now we're cutting the, uh, the break line in between the mustache, the two halves of the mustache. Now remember, as you feather this back, you're going to have to recut it because um, the mustache will get longer. This isn't my normal guy that I carve, but... See, we're getting that, getting everything bought back so that nose pops out. And I don't think we're going to mess with that, the hat part, until we get almost to the end. Feather it back. Yeah, this guy ends up, ends up with a really big mustache. You can see we're cutting it in deeper again. And feathering it back. Now, don't worry about this, how thick your mustache gets, because you can always go back and trim it down later. And uh, that's what we'll end up doing here as this video progresses. Um, I'm only going to upload these videos probably at a half hour at a time. Otherwise, it'll take 20 days for it to upload with my internet speed. Okay, now what we're going to do here, I think, is draw in for the boots. This is a caricature, guys. He's going to be totally unproportional and come up off the bottom by a half inch for the boots. The block is one and three quarters by one and three quarters by four inches. 
if anybody's going to try making this. And then we come up from the bottom a half inch. And we came down from the top for that hat about three quarters of an inch. And then we dropped it around. And that's how deep we're going to cut those feet in for now. And we're using the saber tooth burr again. I like the cuts all extreme too. Oh, we're going to change it out for the taper, the, the saber tooth taper burr, which is getting kind of dull now. I'm glad I bought the uh, cut saw extreme. I see how I can't get that out of there? It's a good thing I pulled that bit out an eighth of an inch when I tightened my collet. So that allows me to uh, push down on it and pop the collet back. There again, eighth of an inch out, guys. Maybe a little less. You got to have enough room to pop that cowlet out. I usually shoot for about an eighth of an inch. And now we're going to plunge that in. Stay to the outside of your line, guys. Yep, stay to the outside of your line. Now we drew that all the way around because the feet are going to come in because your, your feet aren't the same width as your body. See, we went in about a good quarter of an inch. And we're tapering, pulling that back a little bit, feathering it back a little bit. Rounding that edge over a little bit. We're going to round the feet off just a little bit. Just makes it more comfortable to hang on to it when you're carving it. Outside of the line. Because those feet are going to have to be cut down probably about an eighth of an inch. Maybe a quarter. Make sure you have your center lines in place. There's our center line. Redrawing it back in. Keep redrawing in your center lines, guys. If you think you're losing your center line, go ahead and draw it back in. Now we're putting in an arm. We'll draw the arms in on both sides. Now his elbows are going to be pointing back. Beyond his back. And I haven't decided at this point. If I was going to put his hands in his pocket or pockets or not. Now we're drawing the shoulder in. And there's his arm. Now we'll do the other side. Now you can see by cutting the feet back and feathering back underneath the mustache, it almost gives you a, a, a place for your hands right off the get-go. Trying to make them both the same. You'll see me redraw these lines a couple times. Now for me, the lines are just a reference as to where I want everything to go. I'm doing a little pencil measure in there. See if I can get them the, the same. And there's our shoulder on this side. Nope, didn't work for me. Redraw the line. All my pencils have no erasers for some reason. It couldn't be that I make mistakes. No. Uh, I think there's a, a guy that runs around here eating my pencils erasers. Maybe it's that beaver that I just did. Maybe he likes rubber trees. There's 
remember you can keep redrawing lines all day um, but once you take that wood out it's gone once it's gone it's gone get that shoulder in there we go Reangle the arm a little bit. That's what it's all about. Keep looking at what you had and uh, customize it to what you want. See how we bring that shoulder right back to the edge of the wood? That's actually going to be his elbow. So we're trying to use all of that inch and three quarters that we've got there. Now I've put the little, I've rounded it off in the front. So that I know where the hands are going to be. Because you can round that down for the, if you're going to put it in his pockets. Now when we're cutting these in, we're keeping our, our tool our bit back from our line and we're kind of going in on like a 45 degree angle to cut that in now this is just off the cuff guys this wasn't this was just uh taking some r and r from the beaver carp and just uh having some fun with a block of wood and a dremel that's all this is so if it's not the best thing in the world, um, it is what it is, and I had fun making it, and that's what matters. And I decided to let you guys see uh, how to do this if you just want to sit down with a block of wood and have some fun. Yep, we'll be using our, our Dremel, and we'll be using some knives. We'll be using some V tools. We're shaving down that mustache a little bit. Getting it cut up underneath the hat. That's what's going on there. And you'll see us go in here a couple of times. Cutting the nose deeper, cutting the mustache deeper. Remember, you want to make your nose the, the farthest point. Well, in this case, it won't be the nose. The nose will be out there, but the hat brim will be out there too. Now we're just rounding the edge of that hat brim over a little bit. Because we don't want to have, we don't want to have any square edges, basically. Whenever I carve something, I, I try not to leave square edges. I might uh, make it deep so that we have a, a nice shadow line. So we get that optical illusion that the mustaches and stuff is standing out further. Cutting that hat back up in there a little bit. Just working it all out. Now we're, we're working on cutting his arm in. And then we'll cut the bottom part of his arm in. And we're going to round that shoulder in. So that's what we're doing there is we're cutting that. We're getting that set up for the neck. So it's cut in deep. Now we're uh, working on rounding the uh, the shoulders up into the back of the hat or neck. Just working that around a little bit. <laughs> 
working that mustache. I try to show everything I'm doing here. Um, but like I said, the actual time on this was about three hours. So I may not have recorded everything that I've done, but it should be enough to uh, give you guys a really good idea on what to do. I don't want to put you guys to sleep. These somethings, uh, that's what we're, we're calling them. They have no defined uh, determination when we start. And it just comes out to be whatever it is. And we'll get into the paint and stuff. Maybe tomorrow, maybe not. We'll see how it goes. Still working our arms in. Now we're cutting the crease in the arm. So it definitely defines that that's where the arm is and that's where the arm burn, uh, bends at the elbow. What do you guys think about fast forwarding? You know, I've, I've seen other people do it where they go into like a high speed mode. I personally don't care for it much. I like to see what, the, what they're doing in case I feel like well, I want to make the same type of thing. Um, it's hard to get all that footage. I know you guys want to see it close up and like that, but right now I'm still using my phone to film with. And there he is. He's got one arm cut in, and then there's the other arm. We're rounding, rounding that arm over. Now we can round that, we can round that over and put his hands in his pockets. Or at this point, I'm looking at it. I'm like, or we could just have his hands sticking out with a pair of gloves like mittens and ultimately that's the way I end up going say I'm showing you that you want to have your Dremel come in at an angle you don't want it straight up and down but remember you want to keep just on the outside of your lines because as long as you're wide, you can always come back and bring them down a little bit if you want your arms thinner. Say, 45 degree angle, plunged in. And then we'll go 45 degrees on each side of that. And there again, we're cutting the crease in our arm. Do a little round over. Bring that, cut that shoulder in. We're going to cut the shoulder in with the hand piece almost straight up and down. And then we'll come back up under the hat and feather that shoulder back. Yeah, the end of this burr is starting to get pretty dull. But I've had this burr for 
probably two years now. And now we're coming down the back side of the arm. Now we'll end up uh, taking away, see we're taking it, we're feathering back the back. Because ultimately our back will be lower than our elbows. Now we're feathering the shoulder, our shoulder down. Now we'll come out and remove that wood that we left when we put cut that 45 in. Basically that's going to make our mustache stick out a little bit more. And our arm. We're just feathering it back guys, feathering it back. I got a lot of positive feedback on just doing a voiceover without all the noise from the machines. So uh, that's what we're doing today. We're just going to do a voiceover on this thing. And uh, tell me if you like it. Tell me if you want me to add something. <clears throat> I mean, the music they give us in our editing program is so cheesy. Excuse me. Living on cough drops and coffee right now. Just feathering it in, feathering it in, feathering it in. Undercutting that mustache a little bit. Having fun with it. Recutting that split again. Seems like every time you cut everything deeper in one spot, you got to go around to all the other spots and get it cut in too. Now we're rounding that mustache over a little bit. Boy, that's a big mustache, isn't it? That mustache is in there deep too. It's almost got that, that Yosemite Sam looking thing going, don't he? If anybody remembers who Yosemite Sam is. The cartoons of my youth. One time I curved a 20 inch tall Bugs Bunny with a carrot. And we're cutting the back of that arm in. Now because his body is so much shorter than his head, we're not going to give him any pants. We're just going to give him a long coat that goes right down to his feet. Make sure you got to hold that Dremel. I had that thing get away from me earlier today too. And uh, took off right up across the head. Almost got my finger. But we're all good. Everything's safe. I'm just, uh, you just need to feather it back. Fade it out. We're just trying to make those the back of those arms stick out a little bit. Bringing that arm in deeper. 
Bring the other arm in a little deeper. Cutting up underneath that hat a little bit more. We're setting up to take the back down behind the arms. So that's what we're doing there. We're taking the back down. Rounding it over his coat. We kind of jump all over the place on this guy. Carving, carving these things is like eating an elephant. You just have to do it one bite at a time. And it really doesn't matter which end you start at. Some people will start by carving the hat first. And some people will start by getting the face all carved in first. This is one of my, a big nose guy. I like to call him. I've made a, quite a few of them. Um, they're a nice quick little carve. You can see how deep the cuts are. And uh, the back of that, the shoes will come down. So back of your shoes will actually be under your coat. Now I'm drawing in at this point is uh, if you're going to put a long jacket on them, now's the time to draw it in. Uh, because when you start cutting your feet back and stuff, you want to make sure that you leave enough to do that. So now we're going to change out our bit. And we are going to the saber or the uh, I believe it's the saber or the uh, cuts all extreme taper bit. And we're going to make that line, we're going to cut his coat in basically. The only thing I found with the taper bit is that uh, the way the teeth are staggered on it, if you plunge in with it, like sideways, it doesn't want to move because the teeth actually cut grooves into the wood. So um, beware of that when you're using it. The teeth will, when you're going deep, the teeth will dig in and actually it kind of holds the bit right there. So when you go to move it backwards or forwards, it wants to jump on you. Um, I don't have that problem with the the flame bit. It's just this uh, taper bit. So the end of this bit, if you're using it on the side, don't plunge deep. So you can see you get stuck there. Yeah, don't plunge. Don't plunge deep if you're using the side of it. Make sure you keep it moving. Otherwise, I think those. Uh, the teeth on it are in a line and when it digs in it digs little trenches for those teeth and they don't want to move that's just a, a little insight from me that that's a issue I had with it now on the uh, saber tooth bit I don't have that problem because the teeth are all are all spiky and they're kind of all over the place offset I mean, that, that cuts all bit is awesome bit for removing material. But it's like any other tool or bird that you use. You have to find out what it's doing and what it's done. I've had to do is if you plunge in sideways with it and try to move it, it, it like doesn't want to move. You have to use a little more pressure than I like to get it going. Now, once you're moving sideways with it, you're fine. But uh, if you just plunge it in quick... It digs like them little trenches in there and it's hard to get moving. So if you're going to plunge it in, plunge and move at the same time. Otherwise you might have the same issue I had where it, it gets stuck kind of. Now we're rounding the back of the feet off here. We've undercut it back past the coat. Now don't worry, we're going to be taking some of that coat off. We're going to thin that coat out. And this is the reason for your 
for your center lines, even on the bottom, is so that you you can optically measure. Yeah, big words. Optically measure the distance from side to side, so you don't end up making your feet way offset. So your your center lines are very important if you want to keep your piece symmetrical. Now, if you want to make your piece, you want your feet crooked or whatever. Um, I would still put a line if I wanted my feet like shift, shifted to the left for some reason. Yeah, see how we're, what we're doing there. I'm explaining the center line issue. See, I put a cross on the bottom, and when I did the top, I it almost looks like a star up there because I made my center lines and then my cross. Especially for if you're doing a hat to keep your hat center, you want your center lines. And even if you want your hat crooked, you still want your center lines so you can know how much past center you're going. I'm sorry, that that's just the machinist in me. I uh, it was I guess it's been drilled into my head for so many years. Yep, we're liking it. Okay, shift your hand position. Okay, now we're going to cut the hands out. At this point, I have decided that we are going to use put gloves on this guy. So I'm, I'm starting to shape the gloves right now. Just round over the ends of the wood. And then we're going to trace that line we put on there. To give it a, uh, a mark, a place, placement mark, benchmark. And we'll go over and do the same thing to the other side. See that we're putting that, we're cutting that groove in there so we know where the hands are going to be. Now, if you just went on the hands and started cutting them, rounding them back to the arms. Um, as you cut the jacket down, you can put the hands right in the pockets of the jacket. I have done so many little guys with their hands in their pockets. I'm tired of doing them with their hands in their pockets. So I started putting their hands out and their hands straight down at their sides. So you can see their, actually see their hands. Okay, now we're removing some of that wood from the... Uh, the belly. We're actually making his hand stick out further. So if you want the hands way out, make a skinny guy. If you only want them out a little ways, like you just put them out just past his belly. And we're working it up in there. We're getting our hands to poke out. Be mindful of where your feet are, too, in the bottom of your jacket. And that's about it for this one, guys. So, uh, I think we got a minute left on this. So, I want to say thanks for watching. And uh, like, share, subscribe. All that good stuff. And we will catch you on the next one. Just remember, just carve.